Hello, everybody out there. Welcome to Broadway.com's Live at Five. It is Wednesday, March 6th. Happy Hump Day. And I am Ryan Lee Gilbert. And I'm Paul Wontorek. And we are joined here in the studio by the marvelous Caitlin Moynihan. Hello. And we have a couple, <laughs> two fantastic guests with us this afternoon. Yes. We have we, two people we love, but I'm very angry love. seeing them because I'm mad I haven't seen them in their show yet. Right. Mm. Yes. From the Falsettos tour, we have Max von Essen and Nick Adams with us here this Woo! evening. Marvin and Wizard. Marvin for those and of Wizard. you keeping score. That's right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and we will talk to those two fantastic gentlemen in just a bit. But first, let's talk about today's top five. Some A-listers have a new gig set up. So I feel like we hear a lot about Tommy. People want Tommy people to People love out. Tommy. People love the yes. Who's Tommy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, not Tommy Brocco. People love Tommy Brocco well, too. <laughs> yes. This is the yes. Who's Tommy. Mm -hmm. uh, so they're doing it at the Caddy Center. You yeah. know, the Caddy Center does these music. It's a thing now. It is. It so is. They just They've been doing the a lot of these. Man. Yeah. Uh, and now they are doing Tommy. And this is happening April 24th to the 28th. Oh. Josh Rhodes is directing, choreographing. And the cast is phenomenal. They, it really they're is. They're really yeah. casting great people in these uh it's like a it's kind of like encore it's a little more staged maybe mm -hmm. uh casey cott from riverdale tommy yeah. from riverdale right not right. cory cott not cory Corey cott. cott's brother right casey, casey who who's very broadway adjacent yes but now also very talented <laughs> yeah yeah uh mandy gonzalez is yes. mrs walker that's yes. a big belty role mm -hmm. for those of you that know the show um, two-time tony winner christian borrell is playing captain walker love it Luxury love. casting. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> Wes <laughs> Wesley Taylor is Cousin Kevin. Mm -hmm. Manu Narayan yes. <laughs> is Uncle Ernie. He's the bad guy, I think. Yes. And Kimberly Nicole, with an E at the end, is the Gypsy, mm -hmm. which is again, another big belty role. Uh, additional casting to come. You know what Tommy is. We don't have to tell you. It's a musical. <laughs> it was on Broadway in 1993. It won five Tony Awards, but it did not win Best Musical. Did what not. did? I, I was know. really into it this that I year. Know. Kiss of the Kiss Spider, Spider Woman. Woman. Oh, of it, course. It was, a, yes. it was a battle royale. Of it was a course. Tony battle. Anyway, so it's very exciting. I want to go see it. This newsroom is bringing in the big bucks. Yes, the Brian Cranston-led network is a huge hit. It has recouped its entire Broadway investment. Uh, the show also recently extended at the Belasco Theater. It, it will now play through June 8th. You have until then to catch it. It's an incredible show. Began previews in November. It opened uh, in December. It's headlined by Brian Cranston, but you know has an incredible cast. Big hit. Everyone loves it. Probably Why haven't show. we been in it yet? Anyone in can network? Be in it. Yeah. You just we have could, to walk we by could do the it theater right at a certain time. They do like yes. a live oh, video. The, the Anyone can be in yes. Network. Anyone. True. Anyone. Want, want to make your Broadway specific. debut? Network. There you go. <laughs> there you go. We have a sta yes. uh, flash mob. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, final casting has been announced for this upcoming new work. Gene Sakata is the final cast member to join Mara Nelson Greenberg's Do You Feel Anger? I think we all do. Anyone living in the world today certainly feels yes. anger. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. I get think Ryan's so. fashion every day. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she was seen on screen in Hold These Truths and Macbeth, uh, no, on, on stage. Mm -hmm. And then and she was in Big Hero 6, the series. Yes. yes. Yeah. I Have you figured watched this? you would know yeah. that. No, it's no, so I love cute. Uh, yeah. Anyway, Justin Long is in this. It's a play. It's happening at the Vineyard. It starts March 13th. That's like next week. Very so soon. I'm glad they cast her because <laughs> they probably needed goodness. someone to say those lines. <laughs> <laughs> and this theater legend is getting another honor. Yes, yeah, speak of Kiss of the Spider Woman, Cheetah Rivera is being oh, honored. Oh, look at me creating look at you. a segue. You knew. You knew. Uh, the NY Arts Education nonprofit Inside Broadway, uh, which helps uh, public school children all across the city, they have announced that Cheetah Rivera will be the recipient of the 2019 Lifetime Achievement Award from Broadway Beacon Awards. Um, she, of course, won two Tony, Tony Awards for the rank and Kiss of the Spider Woman, Sp uh, but she's been nominated for Bye Bye Birdie, Chicago, Nine, and The Visit as well. You all know who Cheetah Rivera is. She has her own award named after her. Uh, she will be honored at a gala celebration on April 8th. Um, also being honored at the ceremony is Al Roker from the Today Show, who made his Broadway debut not that too long ago. That you never thought you'd consider him a Broadway star. No, but he made no, his Broadway can. debut in Waitress. There Absolutely. Um, so, yes, incredible honor. Congratulations to the two recipients. 
And finally, a bunch of stage alums are gearing up for this new concert. So you might know F. Michael Haney. I forget what the F stands for. I, Frederick. I know I asked him, but anyway, Fred. Fred. We just assume Fred. Frederick. Frederick. F. I have no idea. F. Michael Haney is a very talented actor. He was recently in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and Wicked. He also writes songs, and there will be nice. a concert March 11th at, uh, it's at Feinstein? No, the Green Room. The Green, Green Room. Room. Sorry, it's one or the other. Uh, or Joe's Pub, <laughs> sorry. Uh, the Green Room 42, this show is called Music Played Aloud, colon, the songs of F. Michael Haney. Mm. Um, he's still not revealing what the F stands for in the title of his show. <laughs> Keep it That's mysterious. the big mystery That's that you awesome. have to go. Um, but Alicia Delarue, mm. Anthony Lee Medina, Lauren Nicole Chapman, Andrew Cobert, Drew Gasparini, oh, wow. Jesse J.P. Johnson, who was here recently, mm -hmm. Heath Saunders, they're all going to be in it. It's a concert. It's at the Green Room. There's like no cover. That's the Correct. thing. About that's the, the yeah, big that's thing the about thing. the green room. Yeah, no cover. So, no you, cover. so it's cheaper. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a nice room. It is. So and they it's have green. food and drinks and stuff. Yes. And music. And Love also it. on the site, uh, Daddy, Daddy. opened <laughs> off Broadway. Daddy. <laughs> Alan Cumming is Alan Daddy. Alan Cumming is Daddy. And apparently uh, naked. And mm -hmm. Jeremy O'Harris is just the, one of the well, most talented people naked. on the planet. This is naked. A, this is, <laughs> a, this is a naked show. Yes. Very, this one is a show very. where you get some nudity. But the, um, the, but the photos, photos from the opening we night took, are not No, naked. no, they're all clothed. And Laura Dreyfus and Jeremy Pope put out a music video. Laura Dreyfus is becoming they did. a musical yes. act now. And she like renamed herself for, for, for like music what name. yeah yeah it's like a whole thing what's her name um I Lola <laughs> you don't know I, Lola Dre Lola Dre I think Lola something Dre, like think? that yeah so um, she's following she follow she does a lot of what Ben Platt does right after Ben Platt does it well yeah or you know? at the same time I mean, Ben Platt's yeah, doing exactly. it at the same just time, at the same time. Uh, but you can watch the music video featuring Ain't Too Proud's Jeremy Hope on the site right now Be Great it's a good song I really like it it's a bop all right Paul Thank you so much. I'm literally going to go look for bootleg videos of the Falsettos tour right now because okay. I'm really mad I haven't you, seen it. You, you, you can watch. <laughs> yeah, there's, <laughs> there's B-roll. Uh, Caitlin, why don't you tell us about today's guest? Gladly. Yes, we do. We have Max von Essen and Nick Adams in the studio with us today because they are currently starring in the Falsettos mm -hmm. national tour. Uh, Max earned a Tony nomination for his work in An American mm -hmm. in Paris and was most recently seen on Broadway in Anastasia, one of our faves. Uh, Nick's Broadway credits include a chorus line guys and dolls priscilla queen of the desert and more please follow them on social media at this is max's real instagram name okay it's maxi pad follow it maxi. it's maxi's pad there we go and he has a cat so lots of good content over there and follow nick at the nick adams because he's giving some spoilers into tomorrow's the other two episode which we all know and love because helena york was just here leave all of your questions in the comments below and please welcome nick max and ryan welcome gentlemen thank, thank you for you. having us Hi. thanks for making this place a stop uh, on yeah. your tour <laughs> we really appreciate oh, it pleasure. Yeah. um yeah. how are things out on the road you are out on the road with falsettos an absolutely <laughs> remarkable production of that show how are things pretty good on the road across the country so far, so good. Yeah, huh? I mean, it's a dream. I love yeah. the show. I love the people. Yeah, Max and I have known each other for over twelve years, I think. Our yeah. first time doing a musical together, though, and uh, it is. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you both have, but you both have, like, you toured both with Chicago, right? So you we both did. Yeah, yeah. different yeah. times, but yeah, yeah. I, I didn't even realize. I know that we both have done that, but mm -hmm. I didn't realize. Yeah, we've kind of like crossed. Like, yeah. you know, this is just like a misconnection that finally is happening and it happening happened. in kind of a major in way. A big like, way. Yeah. In a big Marvin way. Marvin and Wizard. Way. It's yeah. really big. Yeah. But it's yeah. really helped because we really are pals and we instantly like just connected in a new way that like we just had something already from day one and it's just, I don't know, I think it's just gotten better but it's helped Agreed. me so much Tighten doing what we're doing. Yeah, yeah. totally. You know, look at it. But, yeah. but what, tell me, when did you, um, when did you exp begin to express interest in doing this show? How did it come into your lives and when did you become a part of it? I, I first knew of the show uh, when I was in college, just mm -hmm. a lot of guys were singing songs from the score and Absolutely. I kind of fell in love with the music. Yeah. And then I, always thought, oh, I would love to, I would love to play Wizard someday. I just really loved his material in the show. Mm -hmm. And my first time seeing it though was this revival. This and um, yeah, and so I just knew that I wanted to play that part. I actually even, when I heard it was being done, I was on tour with um, Wicked at the time. Right. And Alison Frazier, who was the original Trina, was our Morrible. And she said, I just heard from James Lapine that they're gonna revive 
falsettos and you're wiz- you are wizard. Yeah. Uh, wizard. So I was like, oh my god, I agree. From your mouth. What do I do? So I, I actually just like emailed Make it Jordan happen. Roth. Yeah, exactly. I just emailed Jordan Roth. And was like, I want to do the show. Fantastic. Well, I mean, you know, to lose. You know. Right. So I, 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 and he, I, when I now years later, I'm doing it, and he sent me an email. When, we, when I first got the job, and was like, That's, welcome to the family. So, yeah. it, uh, and he's been such a sweetheart. I mean, I, I've known him years now, but it just, I felt like, you know what? If you don't, like, say what you want, like, yeah. Yeah, of course. What an incredible feeling that must be to just sort of be at an age where you think, like, oh, I'd love to do that one day, and yeah. then to find yourself doing it. It's in, very Your strange. dream role. I have things like that that happen a lot. My, like, Chicago was actually my first Broadway show as mm-hmm. a kid, seeing in New York. Oh, And it was okay. my debut. So like eight years later, yeah. so it's wild how things kind of like you come put back. things out there, and the yeah. universe yeah. gives them back. How yeah. blessed! Yeah. <laughs> I know. Blessed. And what about well, you? I mean, oh, Marvin but, is just a yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the show I've known the show a little bit since I was you know in college, but never never fully knew it or appreciated it in the way I do now. Um, and also, I'd seen one or two small productions of it that moved me, and I was totally blown away. But that was 10 plus years ago. And so I had never really watched it and said, oh, I want to do it. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? I watched it and thought this is a beautiful show. But then the revival a couple of years ago, I watched, it was the first time I sat and I watched it and I said, I want to play Marvin. And I literally did make that decision yeah. that if there was a, re- a tour or if, the, I don't know, if the revival kept going or something and there was someone to replace, I wanted to express interest. So I did express interest for yeah. the tour and audition because it was the first time. I think, you know, I'm, I'm older. I never thought of myself as like a dad, you know, but now I do, mm-hmm. you know. <laughs> right, Don't say right. daddy. I mean, I, I consider to be a dad. <laughs> no, but you know what I mean? Sometimes yeah, no, you totally. arrive at a moment in your life and you're like, oh, now this role is a dream role. Yeah. It wasn't years yeah. ago and it, it was, it is a dream role and I'm playing it and it blows my mind. Yeah, no, we were just, so we had a, we have the the current Broadway Gleb, uh, Constantine, he was on Live at Five yesterday. Oh, cool. And he was saying that before w- he was in the show and he left to go back to design school yep. and he left an ingenue and came back and now he's playing Gleb and he's like, I suddenly became this like different actor that had different roles. It sounds like you had a similar experience. Like sort of now you you are at the stage of your life where you're playing Marvin and like what an yeah. incredible thing to be taking on. It and is. And you yeah. left Anastasia to do this, to do and this, that's why right? Constantine came in Absolutely. and got to it. It really is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I've had that too with Christian a lot of my career. Like we've kind of crossed paths for a long time. He and I did West Side Story when we were like 22 years old. We were Tony and Riff. And I've watched him and I've been inspired by him for mm-hmm. so many years. And then, on, and it's also one of the things that like I'm not afraid to watch his PBS taping because <laughs> right. he's so good that if something works, and I know he came up with it on his own, he came up with James Lapine, whatever the formula, that I will take things. And if it kind of fits on me, like I'm never one of those actors that's afraid because sure. he's really good. Right. So like, <laughs> why wouldn't I right. take certain take things bit. that yeah. also fit well on me and Absolutely. just learn from it? Yeah. And of course, like obviously, b- being a pr- in New York City. Everyone loved falsettos. It's it's kind of made for audiences that are here or that come here. But taking a show like this on the road is a little bit more of a question mark. You don't know how audiences are going to, you know, in different parts of the country mm-hmm. are going to respond to a show like this and characters like this. What have you noticed performing for these audiences across the country? Are they just as receptive to this story it, and these it people? It's varied and it's it varies and it's kind of I don't know. I, I think mean, it's surprising in place. Like, we teched the show in Fayetteville, Arkansas, mm-hmm. which is a place that you wouldn't think the yeah, show bold. would be yeah. a hit. Yeah, yeah, and right. they really, they were, were amazing. Like outrageously into it. Yeah. And I love that. I mean, yeah, I, I think yeah. it is, it's the it goal, can be right? in, in, in maybe like a mid. West area, like a polarizing show, but mm-hmm. I felt that people that maybe at the beginning were like, well, it's about gay people and about Jewish people, like things that were maybe not so normal to them or like mm-hmm. part of their everyday life. By the end of it, they're rooting for the love story and for the yeah. family, regardless yeah. of maybe whatever their ideas were coming in. And I think that's and that's what theater's for. Absolutely. And I mean, William Finn and James Lapine, if two people can sort of pull off that, yes. it's absolutely yeah, It's them. hard not to be won over by the show yeah. and to be right. moved by it. If you're not moved by it and sort of on the side rooting for these characters, then I'd like to check your heart. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, because you're probably <laughs> about to die. You know what I mean? You're about to like literally keel over from a heart. Right. Um, right. It's a hard one to not be. You know, <laughs> That's a very good point. Totally about. Touring life also. <laughs> what are for each of you? What are the roses and the thorns of touring life? What is the best part about it, and what is the most <laughs> challenging part of touring life? 
I I mean I think it's we we also have just begun so there's right there's you're at that, the early end of right. it yeah. um, <laughs> but I you know it is a limited engagement tour so it's mm-hmm. not we won't get to that point of like oh we have to repack and do this again sure. I think we just will just be in in this romance with the show until yeah. we're done and mm-hmm. it will feel sad when it's over but um, I I was on tour with Wicked for a year and a half before, mm-hmm. like maybe three or four years ago and uh, the I, I love the sense of like the freshness of going to a new town and it felt like everybody there is so excited to yeah. have the show there. And I feel like we've already felt that with this. Um, the, the thorn I would say maybe is just living out of a suitcase, but right. But I, I, I honestly You're, like don't mind it. it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, it's, it's just not... like figuring out like yeah. laundry and like, you know, day to day things, but right. it's honestly, it's so all the, all the, the pros outweigh anything that might be sure. like a downer, but there isn't, I just, um, yeah. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> and it's short. I mean, also, we're about to go to Sacramento for a week, mm-hmm. but then San Fran for four weeks, L.A. for five weeks. So you weeks. get those little yeah. sit-downs. Yeah, yeah. Where yeah. a lot yeah. of people have done Airbnbs, and we're going to have houses and cars. It's like, this is of, of, of tours. You know, it's like <laughs> it's like five months yeah. total. You know yeah. what I mean? So right. as much as it is hard, I miss my partner a lot. I miss my cat. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I'm not always with her. I miss my apartment. Sure. But there's so much and we're doing this show yeah. on tour which is like an extra special right. like, honor there's seven people on stage total I mean that's that's, yeah, a, that's a gift I mean it's yeah. really like yeah the the it's it's so tiny and to, to travel together I mean we already feel like family family it's yeah. it's inevitable yeah. it's such a true ensemble piece I've never been a part of something that sort of relies on your other actors so much so mm-hmm. Um, I'm. Thank God we all love each other. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> that, we really you, do. Won't last. <laughs> won't last. Five months. <laughs> but the you also have you point. have other exciting things going on. As mm-hmm. Caitlin mentioned, uh, Nick, you have an episode of The Other Two, yes. which is the hit of the I TV. Know. Like everyone is obsessed with The Other Two, including us. Yes. Uh, great. What, how, what was it like to uh, when you were filming that? Did you know? Did you know? Like, oh, this is special. This is going to be. People are going to be loving well, this. Well, I had an idea. I mean, um, the creators, Christopher Kelly mm-hmm. and, and Sarah Schneider, were both head writers on SNL for six years, right, and Lauren so Michaels is executive the producer on it. There, so I yeah. was like, this show has the making to be something major. And I, the tone of it, I could sense from, you know, I filmed for, I think, three weeks in the mm-hmm. city. And um, I, I was like, this is now. Like, people are going to love this. And after, I think, what, two or three episodes, they announced it was picked up for yeah, season two. Yeah, almost so, immediately. And all of, the, yeah. all of the press around the show has been amazing, and everyone I know that's watched it is in love with it. Yeah, we're all obsessed with it. So I'm so <laughs> pleased. But honestly, it like, I, the energy on set was everyone was so passionate about it and was so friendly and loved each mm-hmm. other, and it was truly a dream to go to work there every day. Yeah. And my friend Jimmy, who is one of, he plays like my best friend in this episode. Okay. Um, he called me like, I, like a month before he was, he lives in LA and he called and said, I have, I just got this TV gig. Like, do you mind if I come crash at your apartment? I was like, Oh, amazing. What, what is it? And he's like, it's called the other two. It's on comedy central. And I'm like, I'm auditioning for that tomorrow. <laughs> and like we both, and I go, can you imagine yeah. if I book it and we oh, go to work the other crazy. day? And then that happened. You do this. I know. <laughs> it's crazy. The last time I was on this show, I was promoting his web series in LA called Google boy interrupted. Oh, so right, it's like yeah. a crazy, I just, and he just FaceTimed me on my way in here, and I was like, I'm going to do that, that show on Broadway.com. <laughs> anyway, um, it was awesome, and I tomorrow's going to be a great episode. It's really funny. Yeah. Chase um, gets a nosebleed, I believe. That's, what, that's the title. <laughs> yeah. And um, Carrie meets the Instagays. So, and you're an Instagay. I'm an Instagay. My name is Dallas Drake on the show. <laughs> What's your thing? What's I'm, your... I'm religious, kind of. <laughs> Love it. I can't. You even got, got Kyle laughing. I that's, can't. That's <laughs> amazing. Um, yeah, there's and we are, we shot all over the city. We were yeah. like all over the place. We're in a bunch of different scenes and different settings and crazy outfits. And sometimes I, I don't wear wait. any outfits, so I can't there's a lot wait. to there's a lot to see. A lot to a lot to absorb. <laughs> like a and, quick change booth. <laughs> <laughs> and you're putting out a, an album, I am putting Max Von Oh, an album. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> Call me old fashioned. Call me old fashioned. April Call fifth. Broadway standard. Yes. Yes. And so I couldn't these... decide on the title, so I put my two favorites together. Your name and then Broadway. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And these are Broadway from the golden age of Broadway. Broadway standards, like yes, songs yes, that all mean on... something to you. Yes. You know, I was I I wanted to do it for a long time. I also wanted to do a solo show for a long time, and I was always like, oh, I'm just too so busy, I couldn't possibly. <laughs> but it's because I had no idea what I wanted to do. To do. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's one thing to be hired and perform a role. Here's your material. This is what you're doing. You do all the work. But when it's coming true 
fully from you, it's it's scary. And I, I wasn't sure what, what I was connecting with. And I knew I wanted to um, to highlight and honor my time in American in Paris. So I started with like a with a medley of my favorite songs mm -hmm. from the production. And then once I did that, th th it all sort of fell into place because yeah. I realized like, oh, this is what I. That's I why that show worked so well <laughs> right. for me. Because I was a little piano playing, you know, kid in third grade with a big Gershwin book, sight reading everything and falling in love with these songs. And then t 10 years later on Broadway doing the, you know, no, but like years later singing those songs on Broadway. And then <clears throat> always loving standards, always loving other Broadway, all from this, from this era, you know, variety shows, old school vocalists like yeah. Rosemary Clooney and Shirley Bassey and Judy Garland, you know, and at Sammy Davis Jr., Frank Sinatra, like all these things. And so it sounds like, oh, I'm all over the place, but no, it, it's me coming from that, you know, th what that all did to me, you sure. know, as, as, a, as a kid and as a singer. And so I just found these songs I, I've loved, songs I've never sung, songs I've been dying to sing, um, songs from my career and songs from American in Paris, and all just kind of fit together. I realized they're all Broadway, all, and all standards, or mm -hmm. Broadway from songs that have kind book. of become standards in our world, like the way Broadway songs, <laughs> used, used, used to all become standards and all recorded yeah. on the radio. So it just really started falling into place quickly, and now I'm super, super proud of it. I'm yeah. excited that it's now it's like here. I was I doing this sort of little it. project, now all of a sudden yeah. it's here, and it's like real, and I'm doing you know publicity for it, and people are buying it on Absolutely. Amazon. You can pre-order it on Amazon oh, yes, pre -order right now. On Amazon. Yes. It was the number one. Yes, yeah, yeah, the number, number one, one category. No, number yeah. one release in Broadway soundtracks or something like that. Mm. Yeah, it was kind of wild. It's like people now have people to buy like it. Like you, people like you, Max, but yeah, apparently it's like a big thing. The best, the, the way you know your pre-orders go on Amazon, it that is. is like a it real is. sign as to how the CDs go going. If other uh, you know areas are going to pick it up, or you can do CD signing. So go order it there because go that order is, it. apparently that's like a big. They tell me it's my a people, very big deal. My people tell me that's important. <laughs> I'll reimburse you. <laughs> let's, let's hear from some of these fans that are probably buying the album or getting ready to watch the other two yes, on Comedy yeah. Central. What would they like to know? Caitlin? Definitely. Yeah. So Marissa uh, says that your guys' cast seems to be really close, just as the Broadway cast was. What do you think that it is about the show that keeps bringing the cast and people together? Uh, I mean, have you seen it? <laughs> if you see the show, I think you understand that's impossible not to. Stephanie J. Block was like, when, she, when I saw her, when I see her and share before we, we left town, and she was like, "Your life will be changed." And yeah. Brandon too. He said he'll he'll always chase that experience again. You'll mm. want that mm. again. It's just when you're working on that kind of show, and if they're you know quality people involved, which I think James and Bill and the casting office seem to be doing a good job as putting quality people sure. together. If you look at that Broadway cast, and now if you look at our cast, they're good people. Mm -hmm. So at the mm -hmm. combination of the two is like. Yeah, magical when it, it comes is. to relationships and forming yeah. a forming a bond. And if you're gonna do a show like that every night and step on stage and go through what they go through, you, I hope you're a good person. Yeah, you, know what I mean? you I have hope to you're, be open. You're ready to open yeah. yourself up to that. So as you're probably a human like that as well, opening yourself up to love and friendship pretty quickly. And so, yeah. yeah. Andrew told me before we left. He said this is this show is the f his favorite thing he's ever done in his mm -hmm. career. And I, the, I don't think that I. Will come away without feeling the same feeling way. The I already do. Way, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, yeah, it's. I feel. I feel changed already. My my folks have been asking like, "What's it like?" And I'm like, I yeah. don't want to tell them too much because they've never seen it, and I want them just kind of let to it wash over them. It. Yeah. yeah. And uh, but they they I said I'm I'm already changed, and I will forever like remember our experience together yeah. with this. Yeah. No, and when you do this kind of long enough, I would assume you get to a certain point when when you're doing something extra special with that asterisk, you kind of know it. Yeah. And yeah. it's, this that seems to be absolutely. Soak it in. Sure. Mm -hmm. Amazing. And so Maya asks, what have you guys done to make the characters of Marvin and Wizard your own? Um, I think we, well, well they were fortunate, uh, we were fortunate that um, uh, James and Eric Santagata, his associate on the show, um, and Spencer Liff, who choreographed the right, show, yes. um, all kind of, gave us a structure and let us then shade and fill in. I mean, it was a very fast rehearsal process, so we kind of had to rely on each other. And mm -hmm. we're different people, so it's yeah. going to be different. I mean, people yeah. are like, they're big shoes to fill, but it's also, they're our shoes now. They're our mm -hmm. own shoes. So it's, they, we had amazing people come before us with this. Um, but to have uh, the source in the room with you yeah. is all you need, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Um, but I think because we are different people, we have a different yeah, energy, a different just, chemistry. Yeah. Um, you just go on your instincts and trust the material. The material honestly does it 
for it does the work. You, mm-hmm. you just go on the journey with it. If you, and if you give yeah. yourself over to it. And for so many people, you are going to be their first wizard and their first Marvin. Well, you know, like uh, that's like yeah, that you are going to be the one that they always attach this show mm-hmm. like memories. Yeah, of. someone actually asked you were telling me in a talk back recently and about like you know is it hard to live up the expectations of you know taking over these roles that were played by such incredible people on Broadway? And she's like, well, she's like, no, she's like, because that's your your you think that but like for us we just come in and tell the story and bring ourselves yeah. to it and it's such incredible material that you know if they're if it's a disappointment to people well that's that's on them but for us we just like i said i i'm not christian right but uh, what i can what i feel like we can share i definitely share because yeah. i think he's so wonderful and so human and he has like beats within beats within beats like you look at his eyes and little his choices like he's so creative so if there are certain things i can use absolutely but the rest is like but i'm just not him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's like a combination, yeah. and we have James Lapine in the room, and how I'm going to approach the music, and how I sing differently, and it's su- completely sung through. So mm-hmm. that initially, from moment one, is going to make it different because yeah. we sound different, and yeah. it's a sung through musical. So it's pretty thrilling because absolutely, we, yeah, it's great people. Well, hopefully, continuing to be great pe- people taking on these. <laughs> but these are incredible roles that right. have been played by incredible people yep. for you know in several Since the productions. Yeah. So it's a gift to do them. You just kind of. Go for it. Absolutely. And I think we have time. Yeah, let's do it. This will be the last question. So Katie wants to know, what is the first role that got you, or what's the role that first got you interested in musicals or Mm. show? Oh, gosh. Well, my, maybe it was seeing a show. I think I saw a chorus line as a kid, uh, a tour of it came through. I'm from Erie, Pennsylvania, and they they have like a lot of one-nighters stuff there. And so I think it was probably like a non-union tour of the show, and I went to see it with my parents, and I... (laughs) I just could, I was like, how do I do? Where, how do I even begin to get where they are? I want to do that. Yeah. And um, you know, I just fell in love with musical theater, and I never thought of doing anything else. I just mm-hmm. kind of knew that this was my calling, and nothing else made me see made me feel so passionate or excited. And what's a role myself. you reflect back on that kind of that you did that kind of clinched it I for mean, you? I mean, I well, the big like the in my life like the aside from this experience. Uh, Priscilla was Absolutely. such a, yeah. it was a lot of firsts for me, and um, I get emotional talking about it. It just was, I look back with such joy, like the cast, the, the message of the show, um, and that someone gave me an opportunity to, mm-hmm. to do what I've always wanted to do. Mm. So Beautiful. Yeah. Oh, for, for me, I mean, even though I grew up around New York City, I um, didn't see Broadway shows till later on, and I think I can't recall what I saw first. But my mom, around this one po- point, she saw I was like loving music and, and playing piano and stuff and singing on my own, and she started bringing me home videos. And she, she, around the same time, she brought me Cabaret, and mm-hmm. she brought me Funny Girl, and mm-hmm. Judy Garland's A Star Is Born. And I remember being like, I just like, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, that I makes sense. I mean, from, yeah. the, from yeah. the women in those yeah. musicals mm-hmm. to Omar Sharif to Joel Grey and Cabaret, mm-hmm. I was I was like. Absolutely blown away. Then I started asking if I'd go see Broadway shows. The first one I saw was Dream Girls, and I was just yes. like, I, like <laughs> I, I was absolutely devastated. I mean, blown away. And it's like, that's what I had to do forever. Yeah. Yeah. Well, fantastic. And now we we are so lucky to have both of you performing for all of us. We're, We're very fortunate. Make sure you go check out the Falsettos tour. Sacramento, San Francisco, Los Angeles, Chicago, and Charlotte are yep. all Kennedy upcoming. Center. Uh, at Kennedy the Center. At the Kennedy Center, absolutely. Washington, D.C. Um, also, the other two, Comedy Central tomorrow evening, April 5th. Call oh, me yeah, old fashioned. <laughs> <laughs> <It's coming out. laughs> you know that, right? I was like, April 5th. Ah. <laughs> Thank you Call both me. so much. Thank, Thank you, you gentlemen. Thank Thanks you. for tuning in. Caitlin, why don't you take us out? Gladly. Yes, thank you guys so much for tuning in today. We are live at 5 every single day on Facebook. You can listen to us wherever you get your podcasts by searching for hashtag live at 5 and hitting that subscribe button. Be sure to tune in tomorrow. We talk to Jonathan Burke of Choir Boy.